Railroaders are always asking me, can I collect railroad retirement benefits and Social Security? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do it. Welcome, everyone, to the Railroad Retirement Whiteboard. My name is John McNamara of Highball Advisors. And today, this is a topic that gets a lot of search uh, queries on Google. People wanting to know, especially railroaders, how can I collect railroad retirement benefits and Social Security? So I'm going to walk you through it. And we'll go through the basics, and then we're going to talk about a strategy to do both. Now, it's important to remember, OK, this is really for those railroaders that have enough uh, vesting time to collect Tier 2 but yet a majority of their careers aren't spent in the railroad. So figure individuals that have done like five to 10 years in the railroads, so you really want to pay attention to this video. Uh, there's some great opportunities here. So let's just go to the basics. We'll start with the basics and work our way towards the strategy. So railroad retirement is right made up of tier one, which is, uh, compiles your uh, railroad retirement uh, years of service and Social Security for over 35 years, highest 35 years. Okay, then you have your tier two, which is that uh, almost a pension you wanna think about it, and here's the formula for it, years. You know, you need five years of service, right? That's why I say the five years is very important to get vested. That way you'll, you'll always have your tier two benefits, right? Uh, so that's, that's railroad retirement. Now, Social Security, on the other hand, basically it has no tier two benefits. And it's your 35 highest years, right? That's how they uh, come up with your Social Security number. They take the average of the 35 highest years, right? So here's the important thing to remember, kind of the takeaway thing, right? Social, Sec Social Security affects your railroad retirement benefits, right? Railroad retirement and Social Security, that mixture gives you your tier one. However, railroad retirement board right or their service does not affect your social security so your years in railroad working for the railroad will not affect if you say i'm just getting social security right so it's just 35 years of your social security employment not railroad retirement so let's go through an example and this hopefully will help explain it uh numbers aren't exact but we'll just use these okay so let's say a railroader uh, retires, gets tier one of $1,000 a month, okay? And tier two of $500 a month. And let's say they've, uh, they worked for the railroad for five or 10 years. We'll say 10 years, right? 10 years, this is their payout that they're gonna receive and they're gonna get it at 62 years old, let's say. This is what they're gonna do. However, well, they only done 10 years in the railroad, so they must have been doing something else for the other possibly 30 other years outside of the railroad. So what they can do is they can talk to the Social Security Administration and say, oh, okay, well, what would be my Social Security benefit, right? If I wait till uh, full retirement age of 67, right? What, what would I receive from Social Security? Social Security Board would say, well, you would get $1,500, right? And you would never lose your tier two, you would get $500. So now what you wanna do is collect early railroad retirement at this payout and then at 67 at full retirement age you can flip over and get your social security payment in this example for fifteen hundred dollars now you remember what's great about social security is the longer you wait on it it grows from full retirement age at eight percent a year so if you can take it out to 68 69 70 70 is the max you know, you're growing this uh, retirement income stream there. So, um, so what you want to do to implement this strategy is take early railroad retirement, okay, get that paid, let the Social Security part grow, all right, and then take Social Security at full retirement age or later. And once again, just to remind you, if you're a railroader with, you know, over 20, 25, 30 years, or more, this strategy isn't gonna be for you. You're gonna be on railroad retirement. But for those who have just, you know, did a short stint, long enough to vest, right? You gotta vest into railroad retirement, which is five years after 95. This is a strategy you wanna uh, look at and play with, because it can help you decide on where, when and where you wanna retire uh, when, when it comes up. So uh, reach out to me if you have any questions about this, and I hope you found this video helpful. 
uh, post any comments or uh, you know and I'll get back to you uh, check out my uh, boarding for railroad retirement process on my homepage www.highballadvisors.com and as always everyone please stay safe stay on track and take care so long everybody bye